This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made, so we will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day, and this is the way that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. So we will rejoice, yes, we will rejoice, and be glad in Him, and be glad in Him. For this is the day that the Lord has made, so we will rejoice and be glad in Him. Oh, this is the day, and Jesus is the way that the Lord has made well welcome welcome to the reading of the word of god the best way to start out our day isn't it and this is december 10th can you believe that wow where is the time going <laughs> we are going to be reading a brand new book from the old testament this morning to amos amos this great prophet that the Lord gave wonderful things to say to, very strong things to say about judgment. And so let's just dig right in and see what the Lord has for you and me today. Holy Spirit, we ask you to be here as the guide, as the leader, as the one who reveals the Word of God. You were there when it all happened. And so we are so grateful that the Lord has left you with us, that the Lord has caused a way that we can even have you on the inside of us, and you will walk along with us every day. So I'd ask, Lord, that you would bless each and every one who has come. You know all about them, all about them, and we will fill up on the Word of God. Amos chapter 1, verse 1 the words of Amos, and his name means burden bearer, okay? Amos means burden bearer. Good morning, Cindy and Donna and Kathy and all of you. The words of Amos, who was among the sheep breeders of Tekoa, which he saw concerning Israel in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, two years before the earthquake. Wow, that must have been something to be mentioned here in God's word. Two years before the earthquake. And he said, the Lord roars from Zion and utters his voice from Jerusalem. I hope that you've all gone to see Kathy's graphics, she has such a beautiful one of a big lion leaning over the wall of the old city, roaring his head off. The pastures of the shepherds mourn, and the top of Carmel withers. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Damascus, and for four, I will not turn away its punishment because they have threshed Gilead with implements of iron. But I will send a fire into the house of Haziel, which shall devour the palaces of Ben-Hadad. I will also break the gate bar of Damascus and cut off the inhabitant from the valley of Even. And the one who holds the scepter from Beit Edin the people of Syria shall go captive to Kir, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord, and he's always mentioning three transgressions or four. Wow. For three transgressions of Gaza and for four, I will not turn away its punishment because they took captive the whole captivity to deliver them up to Edom 
but I will send a fire upon the wall of Gaza, which shall devour its palaces. I will cut off the inhabitant from Ashdod, and the one who holds the scepter from Ashkelon. I will turn my hand against Ekron, and the remnant of the Philistines shall perish, says the Lord God. And there's more. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Tyre and for four, I will not turn away its punishment because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom and did not remember the covenant of brotherhood. But I will send a fire upon the wall of Tyre, which shall devour its palaces. Thus says the Lord. For three transgressions of Edom and for four, I will not turn away its punishment. Because he pursued his brother with the sword and cast off all pity. His anger tore perpetually and he kept his wrath forever. <clears throat> but I will send a fire upon Taman, which shall devour the palaces of Bosra. Wow. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of the people of Ammon and for four, I will not turn away its punishment because they ripped open the women with child in Gilead. <clears throat> that is so hard to read. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> that they might enlarge their territory. So see, it really matters, doesn't it? What we do, what we say, where we go, how we handle things. Because the Lord has a record. But I will kindle a fire in the wall of Rabbah, and it shall devour its palaces amid shouting in the day of battle and a tempest, tempest in the day of the whirlwind. Their king shall go into captivity, he and his princes together, says the Lord. And we move along to chapter 2 of Amos, the burden bearer. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Moab and for four, I will not turn away its punishment, because he burned the bones of the king of Edom to lime. But I will send a fire upon Moab, and it shall devour the palaces of Kiriot. Moab shall die with tumult, with shouting and trumpet sound. And I will cut off the judge from its midst and slay all its princes with him, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Judah and for four, I will not turn away its punishment. Ah, Booker Tov, Scott, here to give us enlightenment and Miss Kay, nice to see your name too. <clears throat> so fire away, Scott, we're ready. I will begin with verse four of chapter two. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Judah and for four, I will not turn away its punishment because they have despised the law of the Lord and have not kept his commandments. Their lies lead them astray, lies which their fathers followed. But I will send a fire upon Judah and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem. Good morning, Miss Kathy Morrow. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Israel and for four, I will not turn away its punishment because they sell the righteous for silver and the poor for a pair of sandals. They pant after the dust of the earth, which is on the head of the poor, and pervert the way of the humble. A man and his father go into the same girl 
to defile my holy name. They lie down by every altar on clothes taken in pledge and drink the wine of the condemned in the house of their God. Yet it was I who destroyed the Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of the cedars, and he was as strong as the oaks. Yet I destroyed his fruit above and his roots beneath. Also, it was I who brought you up from the land of Egypt and led you 40 years through the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorite. I raised up some of your sons as prophets and some of your young men as Nazarites. Is it not so, O you children of Israel, says the Lord? But you gave the Nazarites wine to drink and commanded the prophets, saying, Do not prophesy. Behold, I am weighed down by you as a cart full of sheaths is weighed down. Therefore, flight shall perish from the swift. The strong shall not strengthen his power, nor shall the mighty deliver himself. He shall not stand. Who handles the bow, the swift of foot shall not escape. Nor shall he who rides a horse deliver himself. The most courageous men of might shall flee naked in that day, says the Lord. And we move along to chapter 3 of Amos, the burden bearer. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together unless they are agreed? Will a lion roar in the forest when he has no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he has caught nothing? Will a bird fall into a snare on the earth where there is no trap for it? Will a snare spring up from the earth if it has caught nothing at all? If a trumpet is blown in a city, will not the people be afraid? If there is calamity in a city, will not the Lord have done it? Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. How about that? A lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? Proclaim in the palaces at Ashdod and in the palaces in the land of Egypt and say, Assemble on the mountains of Samaria. See great tumults in her midst and the oppressed within her, for they do not know to do right, says the Lord. Who store up violence and robbery in their palaces? Therefore, thus says the Lord God, an adversary shall be all around the land. He shall sap your strength from you, and your palaces shall be plundered. Thus says the Lord, as a shepherd takes from the mouth of a lion two legs or a piece of an ear, so shall the children of Israel be taken out who dwell in Samaria in the corner of a bed and on the edge of a couch. Hear and testify against the house of Jacob, Jacob, says the Lord God, the God of hosts. 
in that in the day I punish Israel for their transgressions, I will also visit destruction on the altars of Bethel. And the horns of the altar shall be cut off and fall to the ground. I will destroy the winter house along with the summer house. The houses of ivory shall perish. And the great houses shall have an end, says the Lord. Wow. <clears throat> Amos had quite a severe word to bring, didn't he? All right. We will leave you right there until tomorrow. And we will move along to Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. And oh, he's going to say specific things now to the different churches. So listen up, church. To the angel of the church of Ephesus, write, he says to John. These things, says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven gold lampstands. I know your works your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things, says the first and the last, who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. How about that? The Lord announcing in his word that they need to be faithful unto death. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. And to the angel of the church of Pergamos write, These things says he who has the sharp two-edged sword. I know your works and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. And you hold fast to my name and did not deny my faith even in the days in which Antipas was my faithful martyr who was killed among you where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block 
before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit sexual immorality. Thus, you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I will give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. Wow, isn't that something? All right, y'all, we move right along to Psalm 129, and this is the ninth song of ascents. Psalm 129. Kathy's got it, uh, Connie's got it right on there for you. Praise the Lord. Many a time, they have afflicted me from my youth. Let Israel now say, many a time they have afflicted me from my youth. And I believe, Scott, you, you gave us a little note there about Yom Kippur. Yet they have not prevailed against me. The plowers plowed on my back. They made their furrows long. Oh, my goodness, referring to the Lord. The Lord is righteous. He has cut in pieces the cords of the wicked. Let all those who hate Zion be put to shame and turned back. Let them be as the grass on the housetops, which withers before it grows up with which the reaper does not fill his hand, nor he who binds sheaths his arms. Neither let those who pass by them say, The blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. Wow. What a marvelous psalm. All right, y'all, we wrap it up. Today's reading with Proverbs chapter 29, verses 19 and 20. Proverbs 29, 19 and 20. A servant will not be corrected by mere words. For though he understands, he will not respond. Do you see a man hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. Wow, what a great warning. Let's not be hasty, right? Let's chew on our words a while because most of them we might just spit out and not say, right? <laughs> There's a lot of words we wish boop, we could take back, but they're out there. They have already been said. Thank heavens for forgiveness, right? The forgiveness of the Lord. Twice in here he said, repent. And he meant that he would bless them if they would repent. Oh, precious Lord, we come to you in prayer. We thank you, Lord, for your wonderful word today. We meditate and chew upon it. There are many things in there for us, for our own lives, for our own situations. And Lord, you know we desire to be victorious. Every one of us wants to come home and hear from you. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's what we wanna hear. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Father, we hold up Israel we hold her up today right exactly where she is. We know that your hand is upon her. 
We know that you are bringing people home and, and, and you have already planned it all. They aren't just arriving haphazardly, but they are arriving exactly when you want each one to come. You have a plan. You count our hairs on our head every day. You are a detailed, loving God. We are so grateful. Father, we'd ask you would be with Israel today in all of the issues, all of the situations, that you would lift up your people, that you would provide those, Lord, who, who are destitute and many older people who don't work anymore. Many of them suffer. Lord, I'd ask that you would provide through all of us who have many things we could give. We have an overabundance. You have blessed us abundantly. Father, stir our hearts, stir our hearts to be extremely generous in this season of celebrating your birth. Cause us, Lord, to actually look for places that have needs and need us to supply. And when many of us are doing it, the need will be met. We bless you, Lord. You are bringing your people home. We thank you for that, Lord. We are, we are so grateful to live at this time when we can watch all of that happen. Father, I hold up America to you. And I'd ask, Lord, that you are, you are teaching us hard lessons at, the, at this time. Very deserving. And Lord, I'd ask there again, Lord, don't let us miss it. Don't let us miss anything that you want us to observe, to obey, to correct, to lift up. Lord, help us not to be critical of ourselves, but to read your word and measure ourselves, go over our lives by your word, your precious word that never fails, that is sown in our very spirits. We are most blessed to be able to walk, Lord, every day, walking in your word, walking with you, being blessed by the Holy Spirit. Father, I'd ask that you'd raise up the church, prepare her for your second coming. Cause us to get very serious about all of the ministry that matters, the saving of souls, the spreading of the gospel, sharing your word, reaching out, blessing people, giving, taking food, paying bills is a surprise. Find out what their needs are. And as we minister to one another, the world will see and they will want to come. We ask, Lord, that you bless the church in America and in every country. Lord, particularly those in very hard places in, the, in countries where they are in prison, where they are despised. Oh, precious God, let them feel your presence. Let them feel like you are holding them. Inspire them, Lord. <clears throat> Inspire them like we read today. His warning, you're, some of you are gonna be thrown in prison for 10 days and, and you're gonna die. Lord, wherever and whatever is happening, we lift up people everywhere and we pray for them. We pray for them that answers might come, that joy might suddenly burst upon them in a very special way. Lord, we pray for the leadership in every country and Lord, you have a plan. You have a plan. Cause us, Lord, to see these things clearly in the spirit and to be 
in agreement with you. Lord, I thank you that you are going to hear all of the prayers and the requests and the praises and the songs, the worship of your sons and daughters today. We tell you we love you so much. We are so grateful, Lord, for our salvation. It's our most precious, precious jewel in our lives. Lord, bless each and every one now. And we will walk on in your ways. God bless you all. Love you so much. Bye-bye.